Hello beautiful people and welcome to a new PD tutorial. In this video we're going to learn how to read audio files into our patches. So let's create a new object and we will call it read sf tilde. If you want to use the shortcut you can type control or command 1 on your keyboard. Okay for this object the creation argument will specify how many outlets you will have depending on how many channels your audio file is composed of. So if you have a stereo file, you're gonna type two as creation argument and the object will have two outlets. Well, actually three, but we will see what the rightmost outlet it is for in a moment. So if you wanna work, for instance, with a surround file, 5.1 surround file, you will type in six because a surround file 5.1 surround has six channels. If you want to work with a 7.1 surround file, you will have eight channels. So you have to type in as the creation argument for the readsf object eight. I'm going to work with a serial file, so I will type in two. And now I can create a mechanism to control the master volume. So I will create two multiplication objects and I will create a slider, in my case, an horizontal slider. So I have to change the properties for the slider because by default, it generates number between zero and 127, while I want them to be between zero and one. So right click on the slider and we will change the upper value to one. Click okay. Now we can create a DAC object we can make all the connections. Okay, now the part where we learn how to control the readsf object. So the first thing that we need to do is to open up file and we'll use a command for that. So we need a message box. Again, the shortcut is control two or command two. And we type in open, which is the command that we're going to use to open the audio file that we want to read. Then we type in the name of the file we want to read. In my case is drumloop03.wave. And now we can connect the outlet of the message box to the inlet of the readsf object. Now one thing that you should know is that you can type in the entire path of folders where your file is located. But for convenience, you can save the patch and the audio files into the same folder so in this way, you don't have to type in the entire path in the message box. So save the patch in a folder, put the audio file or the audio files that you want to read into the same folder. And this will allow you to type in the message box only the name of the audio file itself. Okay, so now to start and stop the playback of the file, we can either use a toggle object or we can separately send a zero message and a one message. So we can create two new message boxes and inside one of those we type in zero and on the other one we type in one. Now there is a specific order that you have to follow to properly read files with the readsf object. So first you have to click on the open message and then you can start the file playback clicking on the one message or clicking on the toggle object. So don't forget to activate the DSP in the PID window, turn up a little bit the volume, click on the message box to open a file, and then you can play it back. So the rightmost outlet of the readsf object will send a bang every time it finishes to play back the file. So we can use this to actually create a looper. So what we have to do is to just connect this outlet to the message boxes that contain the open command and the one command. But to properly do that, we have to make sure that the bang is sent first to the open message and then to the one message. So we're going to use an object that we're not going to discuss today. So just take it for granted. So we'll create a new object control one or command one, and we'll type in TBP. 
This is a trigger object and we're going to discuss it in one of the next videos. So now we can connect the rightmost outlet of the readsf object into the trigger object inlet and we will connect the right outlet of the trigger object to the open command, so to the message box that contains the open command. In the left outlet of the trigger object, we're going to connect it into the inlet of the message box that contains the one command or message. So very briefly, the trigger object will make sure that a bang received into its inlet is sent first to its rightmost outlet and then to its left outlet. So if we now click on the open message and we start the playback, once the file will reach the end, it will start playing back again. Now, to end the loop, we just click on the zero message and it's done. So, of course, you can read several files into your PD patch. So, if we just copy and paste all of this block and we use a different name for the second block for a different audio file. So, in my case, I will type in drum loop 02. I can read both files together at the same time. So if I want them synchronized, I just can create a bang and very roughly connect its output to the open messages for both blocks and to the one messages for, again, for both objects, for both blocks. And of course, if I want to stop them in a synchronized fashion, so to speak, we can create another bang and we can connect its outlet to the zero messages for both blocks. So in this case, we will have a synchronized reading of two audio files. So I hope you will have fun with this and if you have questions please feel free to write them in the comments and I will be happy to answer and I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. If you haven't already done it please consider subscribing to my channel, liking this video, sharing with your friends and thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Ciao!